All right, so in this video, we're gonna look at the curvature of a vector valued function. Um, the given the function r of t equals t times i plus six t squared j plus four t k. And we're just in finding the curvature um, and specifically at the point one, six, four. So we'll do some of the stuff we saw in the last process. Um, at the beginning, uh, finding the first derivative and we just take derivatives of each of the components. So derivative of t is one, and so we can just write i, because one times i is i. Derivative of 6t squared is 12t times j, and the derivative of 4t is four. Okay. Now finding the magnitude of that derivative, we will take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components, And so the first component is 1, and the second component is 12t. And the third component is 4. Uh, 1 squared is 1, 4 squared is 16, and so that gives you 17. Um, but then the 12t is 144t squared. So you simplify that as much as you can. Here we simplify it down to that. Um, and then we go and find the second derivative. So we're going to kind of go back to step one and take the derivative of that to get r double prime. And the derivative of one is zero. And so you get zero i. Um, so you can drop the i altogether, or you can write 0i. Uh, derivative of 12t is 12, so you do need a 12j there. And the derivative of 4 is also 0, so you get 0 times k. So you could just write this as 12 times j. All right, now we're ready to do the cross product of r prime with r double prime. And so we're going to use the... Uh, matrix technique for that. And the first row are the basis vectors i, j, and k. And the second row is the components of r prime, which are 1, 12t, 4. And then the third row are the components of r double prime, which are 0, 12, and zero. And the determinant of this matrix will give us the cross product. All right, so if we look at the first component, we would have 12t times zero, which is zero, minus four times 12, which is negative 48. So we're gonna get a negative 48i And then for the j component, we'd have 1 times 0, which is 0, minus 4 times 0, which is 0. So you get 0j. And for the third and final component, the k component, we have 1 times 12. Oh, that should have been minus, sorry. Um, it should have been minus zero j. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter because it was zero, but uh, try not to forget that negative in front of the j. Uh, for k, one times 12 is 12 minus zero times 12t is just going to give you 12. So 12 j. that minus. All right, so the cross product of r prime and r double prime is negative 48i 
plus 12k. Next up in step five, we're going to find the magnitude of that cross product. And we've already done a magnitude in this process. So you know how that works. Square root of the sum of the squares, the components. So here we have negative uh, 48 squared uh, plus 12 squared. And that should give you a square root of 2448, 2448. All right, at this point, you should be ready to put together the curvature function. Um, use the Greek letter kappa, I think, lowercase Greek letter kappa. So just draw kind of a, a funny K, or you could just draw a K. It looks like a capital K, but it's lower. It's small. And uh, what you do is you take the cross magnitude of the cross product from step five, the square root of 2,448, and divide by the magnitude of r prime from step two, but you cube that. So remember in step two, we got magnitude of r prime was 144 t squared plus 17. And we're going to cube that, raise it to the third power. Uh, you can combine the square root and the exponent of 3 and just get an exponent of 3 halves, right? Because the square root is exponent of 1 half, and you would multiply those exponents. So that is the curvature function. Now we can evaluate that function <clears throat> to find the curvature at a specific point on the curve. Um, but it's obviously a function of the parameter t. So we need another t value. Um, so intentionally set this up the way you'll see some of these problems where they just give you the points, the coordinates of the point in uh, in space. And you need to ascertain the parameter value t from that. But again, the the coordinates come from r, right? And so t, the i component function t, it gives you the 1. And then the j component function 6t squared gives you the 6. And then the 4t gives you the 4. Um, and so it's pretty easy to tell here that if t is equal to 1, um, then we, in fact, get that, right? Um, because r of 1 would be the vector 1, 6, 4. Um, and so you'd be at that point, 1, 6, 4, um on the curve so that tells us that t equals one so we now can evaluate the curvature function by putting in a one for t uh and that will give you square root of two four four eight over uh, 144 plus 17 um, is, well, let's just redo that. Got too messy there. Uh, square root of 2448. Uh, 144 t squared would be 144 times 1, which is 144, plus 17 is 161. Uh, and then that's raised to the 3 adds power. So that's the exact value. You can approximate it since this is sort of an end value, and that should be about 0, 0242. Right. Cover step seven. And uh, the last thing to do is to validate. Now, there's another curvature formula. Um, Uh, that we can go through and use to validate. So remember that we were trying to check that this was zero. Point two four two. So in this alternate formula, 
we form the unit tangent vector, uh, which we saw in the last methodology. Uh, and you get that from normalizing or dividing uh, R prime by its magnitude. And we have both of those. We have R prime and the magnitude of R prime in steps one and two. Uh, and so switch to component form here, but it was one, 12t and four, right? One i plus 12tj plus four k. And then we divide by the magnitude, um, which was the 144t squared plus 17 and the square root. So that is the unit tangent vector. Um, and then we take the derivative of that. And then this is where you kind of see why the other formula is a little more useful. Often the derivative of t is pretty complicated. Um, and so you would need to be uh, especially careful with that middle component where you have t on the top and bottom. Um, and so we'll just write out the derivative and you can uh, validate that on your own. But you just uh, distribute that square root and then you may need to use the quotient rule uh, on the middle component, you could use the power rule on the others. So there's the derivative of t, uh, and then we need the magnitude of the derivative of t. So then it gets even worse. Uh, but you know, you could use um, Python or something to kind of help with some of these calculations. So we got negative 144t squared, we got 204 squared, and negative 576t squared. And then you'd square the bottom. So I have it written. with an exponent of two. Oh, it's three halves. Oh yeah, the, the denominator is the same because it would just factor out. I was looking at the next line. All right, and then to get the curvature, uh, we take the magnitude of T prime and divide by the magnitude of R prime. Right. Remember, this is the magnitude of R prime. Now, that's not too bad because we already have that expression in the denominator raised to the three halves. Um, and so you're dividing um, by that. Uh, you'd really be multiplying to the numerator um, with that expression raised to the one half power. The square root is one half power. And so Why don't we just save ourselves some time? We'll do it with this. So dividing by the magnitude of R prime, it's really just going to multiply by square root of 144t squared plus 17. Um, and that's the same as 144t squared plus 17 to the one half power. And those are the same uh, base. So then you can add the exponents and three halves plus one half gives you two. Um, and you can clean up the top a little bit. The negative goes away. I mean, I don't know if there's any point in combining those t squared terms. But the big simplification is that this is now squared. All right, and then we evaluate that at 1 and replace all the t's with 1, put it in the calculator, 
and you get three, nine, four, one, two, eight as your radicand there, uh, over 161 squared. And it in fact gives you the same number. Um, so there are times when this other formula is the preferred way of doing it. I'd have found the uh, formula we did earlier was usually better. And so I saved this one for the method or the, the validation, but it's nice to know both. Um, in terms of geometric uh, validation, right, the curvature measures the inverse or reciprocal of the radius of the circle that the curve kind of matches up with. Now, in three dimensions, you have to think of it as a sphere. Um, and so um, I think the application for this section goes into that, oscillating circles and stuff. So it's called the oscillating sphere in this case, uh, the sphere that the curve would wrap around that would have the same curvature. So what we can do is we can graph the curve and graph the oscillating sphere determined by this curvature and show that it is in fact uh, the correct value. So let's do that. So we can just plot the curve first by defining the component functions. There's our curve. We don't need to see these. Um, and then let's look at the point uh, 164. That's what we're interested in. Let me zoom out. So that point is actually in view. There it is. So yeah, we want to plot the sphere that has a radius equal to the reciprocal of the curvature that we found. Um, and let's see. Um, if we take the reciprocal of The curvature, that which was 0.0242, uh, we get about 41.3. So since it's going to be an approximation anyway, we're going to do that. You could take a little more digits if you wanted to, but um, that is the geometric principle here that um, the radius is 1 over the curvature. And we found that to be like 242. And so this is going to be about 41.3. Now that's a pretty big sphere. Um, and what we want is we want the surface of the sphere, like kind of outside of it, to um, be right there. So what we need to do is um, we need to. All right, sorry, I paused the recording because I had to <laughs> review how this worked. Um, I did a little bit of zooming out just to get a better view of this. Um, but yeah, what I said was true that we want to get uh, oscillating sphere. So we create a sphere. And when you define a sphere here, you set the center, which we'll use as P. Um, and then we'll use the radius is the reciprocal. Uh, of that curvature, 0, 2, 4, 2. Um, and uh, again, you might have to zoom out to see that sphere because it is pretty big. Um, and it, it looks a little ellipsoidal because I don't have these things quite zoomed out the same, the different axes. Um, so that's not the actual sphere we want, right? We want the point P to be on the surface of the sphere. So we do need to translate it. Um, and so we'll create a segment of, or we'll create a point A, uh, which is a point in the sphere. 
and it will randomly kind of pick a point in sphere, which is a point, you know, on the sphere, right? Um, so there's A there. We can make it a different color to see it better. And then we create a segment from uh, the point P to the point A. So segment P comma A. You could see that line there connecting those and that's sort of like a radius line, right? Um, but now we wanna kind of swap the roles of P and A. We want A to be the center of the sphere and P to be on the surface. So what we'll do is we'll create another sphere because we have the points now and we'll say A is the center and P is the point on the outside. Let's hide the old one. Um, now, when it picked that point A, it kind of picked a random point uh, on that sphere. And so it's not in the right spot. So we want to kind of move that around. And as you move around, you'll see that the, the segment kind of fixes it a certain length. And then if you move it down, you can then position it so that um, we get this, right? That's what we're after. Um, essentially the curve is tangent to the sphere uh, at that point. And so you can kind of see that alignment um, and you if you had the wrong curvature, the, the sphere would be too uh, curved or not curved enough to match up with that. So that validates the curvature in fact fits the curve at that point. Um, and that will wrap up the methodology for curvature. I'll see you in the next video.